What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a book haul. <laughs> not done a book haul in a while I think since June maybe and that's because I haven't been buying any books I've been trying to read the books that are on my shelves but today's book haul is all books that either my friends gave me or that were sent to me by publishers so some of these are arcs some of them actually already came out some of them are arcs that haven't been published yet, but we're gonna go ahead and get right into this video. Okay, so I'm just starting from the top here. Um, this first one is Until I Find You by Re Frey. And I, I didn't even know I was getting sent this. This was from St. Martin's Griffin. Um, and I believe it's out. Like I think that this is a finished copy. I don't think that this is an arc, but it actually sounded like something I was interested in. So that's why I am keeping it. I want to read it. This says two floors, 55 steps to go up, 40 more to the crib. Since Rebecca Gray was diagnosed with degenerative eye disease, everything in her life consists of numbers. Every day her world grows a little darker and each step becomes a little more dangerous. Following days of feeling like someone watching her, Beck awakes at home to the cries of her son in his nursery. When it's clear he's not going to settle, she goes to check on him. She reaches in and picks him up, but he's not her son and no one believes her. Yeah, that is crazy. I feel like I've never heard of a story like this and you guys know I love like babies. I love missing children in books and then with her having this like degenerative eye disease, I thought that that was very interesting and um, I feel like my one sister-in-law might really like this book after I'm done with it. She does American Sign Language and stuff but she also, I think her grandfather was blind so she might actually like kind of really appreciate this and I know American Sign Language is like for deaf and not blind but you know what I mean like I think that she would be very interested in this as well okay next up this was one I was supposed to read in October and I didn't get to it this is five total strangers by Natalie D Richards and this was published uh, October 6th I got sent this from midnight fire reads so thank you guys for sending this to me I just have not had a chance to pick it up I, I totally meant to read this in October and then I just I don't know I got foster placements we started moving there was a lot of different stuff this says she thought being strained was the worst thing that could happen. She was wrong. Mira needs to get home for the holidays badly, but when an incoming blizzard results in a canceled layover, it looks like Mira might get stuck at the Philadelphia airport indefinitely. And then Harper, Mira's glamorous seatmate from her initial flight, comes to the rescue. Harper and her three friends are renting a car and they can drop Mira off on the way home. But as their trip begins, Mira discovers her fellow travelers aren't friends like she thought. They're total strangers. Then it says something about the roads getting slippery and stuff. Wow, okay, so this sounds really great. I think I wanna read this still like over the holidays, um, especially with this like beautiful snowy cover. It almost sounds like no exit or has the feel of no exit. So I really hope I like this one. It sounds fantastic. Okay, this is another arc that I meant to read in October and I did not get to it. I also have the audiobook from Libro FM, which is an audiobook subscription app service, and they actually support local bookstores. So I actually really, really love that company, and you can check out the link down below. I have where you can get a free month. It's $14.99 and you get one audiobook. It's kind of like Audible, but obviously Audible doesn't support local bookstores and Libro FM does. And so I'm actually really excited to listen to and read this. This is Leave the World Behind by Rumen Alam. And this is from Harper Collins. So thank you so much for sending this to me. This is about Amanda and Clay and they head out to a remote corner of Long Island expecting a vacation. Um, they want quality time with their teenage son and daughter and they've rented this like luxurious home for a week. But with a late night knock on the door, the spell is broken. Ruth and G.H., an older couple who claim to own the home, have arrived there in a panic. These strangers say that a sudden blackout has swept New York, and with nowhere else to turn, they've come to the country in search of shelter. There's more than that, but it, this says it's a magnetic novel about two families, strangers to each other, who are forced together on a long weekend gone terribly wrong. That sounds great. I love like kind of apocalyptic stories and with this whole blackout thing, like that's what it sounds like. I'm very excited to get to that one. Another book that Midnight Fire Reads sent to me was The Girl Who Wasn't There by Penny Jolson. And this is also an arc, but this comes out 
oh, November. <laughs> what month is this? I need help, you guys. <laughs> well, it is November. It comes out November 2020. I'm not sure exactly what day, but this is a YA thriller and it says, I know what I saw. Nothing ever happens on Cassia's street. And Cassia would know. Her illness keeps her home for days at a time with little to do but watch the world from her bedroom window. So when she witnesses what looks like a kidnapping, she's not sure she can believe her own eyes. So she sets out to find the only other witness, the girl in the window across the street, the girl who was also watching when things went down. But what Cassia discovers shocks her more than the kidnapping itself. There is no girl. That sounds creepy. Okay, these are some good ones. Next up, I have The Three Mrs. Wrights by Linda Keir. And this actually did get sent to me by Lake Union Publishing. So thank you so much for sending this. This is not an art, this is actual final copy and this is already published. But I am super excited for this. This sounds like a book that's right up my alley. It's like a domestic thriller about this guy who is like in a relationship with three different women and he doesn't think that they know is he a hus their husband or is he just like dating them all I'm not sure I think he actually is married to the one lady Holly because it says Holly has settled into a comfortable life with Jack her husband of nearly 20 years they've raised three children they own a beautiful home and they founded a worthy charity but he also I think is in a relationship with Jessica and Lark so uh what can't wait for that it almost kind of sounds like The Wives by Taryn Fisher. Next up, I have Three Little Truths by Ethan Shortall. I'm not sure if I said that author's name correctly. This was sent to me by Putnam Books. Putnam? Putnam? I'm... I just don't know how to say anything today, but this sounds really, really good. It, it A lot of the like publicity behind it says that it's like Big Little Lies. It says the perfect next book for fans of Big Little Lies, a must read. Um, so this says Martha used to be a force of nature, calm, collected, and in charge. But since moving her husband and two daughters to Dublin under sudden and mysterious circumstances, she can't seem to find her footing. Robin was the it girl in school, destined for success, and now she's back at her parents with her four-year-old son, vowing that her ne'er-do-well ex is out of the picture for good. Eddie has everything she could want apart from a baby and the acceptance of her new neighbors, or Edie, Edie, maybe. She longs to be one of the girls and to figure out why her perfect husband seems to be avoiding their perfect future. Three women looking for a fresh start. Their friendship will change their lives. So yeah, it does sound a lot like Big Little Lies. I hope it's not too much like it. Whoa, this font is small. So yeah, hopefully that one's good. Okay, next up, this is Bedazzled by Ryan Lasala. And this was sent to me by Midnight Fire Reads as well. So thank you. This, I think, is a queer book. Sometimes a breakup is your chance to break out. Yeah, Project Runway goes to Comic Con in an epic queer love story about creativity, passion, and finding the courage to be your most authentic self. Raffi has a passion for creation. He's always chosen his art over everything else and is determined to make his mark at this year's biggest cosplay competition. If he can wow there, it could lead to a sponsorship and then art school and finally earning a real respect for his work. There's only one small problem. Rafi's ex-boyfriend Luca is his main competition. Okay, so it sounds like a uh, kind of like maybe hate to love queer story. I'm not sure if it's hate to love or not, but it sounds like there's that like tension. Okay, next up I have The Pirouette Predator and this is by Jade Lee Wright and she actually had reached out to me on Instagram asking if I wanted to read her book. So she is the Boho Bookworm on Instagram. I'll link her profile down below so you guys can go check out to see if you want to read this book. So this is a like psychological thriller. It says gritty, real, and somewhat dark relationships. Dancers are disappearing and Piper Brady's twin sister Robin, a ballet instructor, was the first victim. With their eerie twin connection severed, Piper is one empty half of what used to be an unbreakable whole. Everything she cherished has been snatched from her. Determined to bring her sister home, she returns to the small town they grew up in to continue the search. Then there's like more and then it says, can Piper trust herself? She's been having blackouts and relies on strong medication. Is any of it real? Which I love like amnesia type stories. So I'm excited for that one. Next up, we have Every Last Lie by Alex Finley. And this was sent to me by Minotaur Book. 
looks. Thank you so much. I'm very excited for this one. And I think Gwen also got a copy. So there might be a buddy read in the future, maybe a podcast episode. We'll have to see. This one actually doesn't come out, I don't think, until March 2nd of 2021. So I still have time to read this one, which is great. This says his family dead. After late night, New York University student Matt Pine returns to his dorm room to devastating news. Nearly his entire family has been found dead from an apparent gas leak while vacationing in Mexico. The police claim it was an accident, but the FBI seems far less certain and they won't tell Matt why. Then there's something about also like his brother, I guess, is behind bars? It says his only move to face his every last fear. When Matt returns home, he's faced with a frenzied media and memories he'd hoped to leave behind forever. Now, as the deaths in Mexico appear connected to Danny's case, which is his brother in jail, Matt must unearth the truth behind the crime that sent his brother to prison, putting his own life in the line of fire. Interesting. I hope I like this. This is kind of out. It's, it's more of a thriller I've never read before. Okay. Then the next two books that I have are both books that I believe I got from my friend Gwen. She was unhauling them and I decided I wanted them. And the first one is Anxious People by Friedrich Bachman. I've never read a Friedrich Bachman, Friedrich, Friedrich Brock. What is wrong with my mouth today? I've never read a book by this author before. Um, but everybody that has been reading this has been raving about it. I saw it all over the place. Everyone was talking about it. So I think that she had an extra copy, which is why she was getting rid of this one. This is an ARC and I decided to take it because I also have the audiobook on Libro FM. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook and read this at the same time. And I'm very excited for this. I hear it's like a funny thriller um, funny I don't think is the word I forget what word they use for like satire I guess it's like a satire thriller when I think of that I just think of like zombie land you know where they're like joking while zombies are like you know chasing them or whatever so that's pretty much all I know I think it's like people break into this house I think I should have done more research on that one. And then last but not least, this is The Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell, which I have only read one, I think only one other book by Lisa Jewell. And I did really like it. I think I, it was the, I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> but anyway, I am very excited for this one. And I think that the cover is beautiful. I haven't really heard much about it though. I'm not even sure what this one is about, so let's read it. Owen Pick's life is falling apart. In his 30s, a virgin and living in his aunt's spare bedroom, he has just been suspended from his job as a computer science teacher after accusations of sexual misconduct, which he strongly denies. Searching for professional advice online, he is inadvertently sucked into the dark world of incel, inv involuntary celibate forums where he meets the charismatic, mysterious, and sinister... Bryn. Interesting. Across the street from Owen lives the Fours family headed by mom Kate. This is a huge synopsis. I'm not reading the rest of this. Okay. Well, anyway, I still don't know what this is about, but I'm hoping it's still good. So drop me a comment down below if you think it was a good book or if you think I would like it or if I should read it or whatever. Okay. That's it. You guys, these are all of the books that I recently hauled that I'm very, very excited for. Oh, that one's turned around. These are all of the books that I recently hauled that I'm really, really excited for. So thank you to all the publishers that reached out to me and sent me all of these. I am so, so excited to read them. There's just something about like opening a book from the mail and not knowing that you were getting it. And it is just chef's kiss. It's the best 10, 10 would recommend, but okay. That's it. You guys, I will see you guys very soon in another video. Bye. Bye.